with the new games of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon coming to shelves on November 17th of 2017. Tons of speculations and theories have been going around of what these games can be like, and it brings up the question of will there be other islands within Alola? As mentioned in the trailer, it is an alternate story of Pokemon Sun and Moon. With that being said, we can expect a lot of different things to happen. The possibilities for new islands definitely arise, and I think I have a theory on why we will get new islands. So sit back and relax for we are about to dive into some Hawaiian culture. First off, let me go ahead and credit Game Explain for finding this awesome theory on how there could possibly be more islands, but I feel like I can expand on what they've explained so far. So go check out their original video in the description. They explain in their video that there is a triangular shaped crest on both Lunala and Solgaleo's head. Within that crest lies a mosaic of different colors potentially representing other islands around Alola. Evidence supports this because it highly represents the Island Challenge amulet. Mele Mele is yellow, Akala is pink, Ula Ula is red, and Pony is purple. The pink on the crest, however, is missing. However, I don't think that the island was destroyed. Instead, I think that Game Freak is trying to have all, if not the majority, of the Hawaiian Islands included somehow. All of the Hawaiian Islands are a color, and the ones we have so far represent the big ones. Oahu is Mele Mele, Hawaii is Ula Ula, Maui is Akala, and Kauai is purple. As we know, Hawaii has eight islands, and two of them are forbidden. I will explain how those work later. Therefore, there are four islands left and there are eight colors in the triangular palette on Solgaleo and Lunala's forehead. I know that the pink one isn't on there because Tapu Lele is based off the Hawaiian god Cain, which is the god of creation, the leader of all the gods in Hawaiian culture, and represents the beings of dawn, sky, and sun. What do all these embody? The sun, the moon, and light itself. The sun and moon are both in the sky and create light. Necrozma is the prison Pokemon it takes in light, meaning that the fusion was more than likely caused with Necrozma and Tapu Lele. That is why the pink coloration is not found on the shape, and also pink is not in the color spectrum of prisms. It also makes sense because Cain is the lead god, and it adds up if the most powerful of all the Tapus would fuse or kind of sacrifice itself off for some kind of war maybe happening with the Ultra Beasts, as the Tapus are known for fighting off Ultra Beasts and protecting Alola in general. Tapu Lele is based off Cain. Kane is the most powerful of all the gods. It makes sense for Tapu Lele to be the main leader of the Tapus. This seems like a stretch, I know, but it seems like it's a high possibility. And I have even further evidence of this. Take a look at this screenshot from the official Pokemon company with both Solgaleo and Lunala. Lunala's eyes are pink, and the chest piece has pink parts. You may be asking, why doesn't Solgaleo have this? Well, Solgaleo is based off the sun, and therefore does not need much of Tapu Lele's power. The moon relies on the sun for its light and glow, which would mean Lunala would need more of Tapu Lele's power. However, the fusion between both Pokemon would still happen. There would just be more of a visual effect on Lunala. Might I also mention that Akrozma and Lele are both Psychic types. Psychic type seems to be a perfect candidate for Light and the Sun, as Solgaleo is Steel and Psychic. And throughout the Pokemon series, Psychic has played a huge role with the Sun. Look at Espeon, for example. Another small part I want to address is that there is actually a Hawaiian legend about Kane and how it separated itself from Poe, which is the Endless Black Chaos. Trying to separate itself from the Black Chaos, it created light to separate itself from the Poe or the Endless Black Chaos. What if Ultra Space is the Poe and the fusion of light between the embodiments of the Sun and Moon Pokemon, Solgaleo and Lunala, with the power of Tapu Lele using its light to refract off Necrozma, is the way to push back Ultra Space. In Tapu Lele's Pokedex entry, it mentions that it acts gulissously cruel, which means acting cruel without deception, meaning it has no idea it's acting cruel, sort of childlike. What if the Poe or Ultra Space is the reason for this, and by merging together with these three Pokemon, of course, Solgaleo and Lunala separately, is the way to break that sort of childish behavior from Lele. Also, Necrozma is known as an Ultra Beast Killer. So now we have all eight islands on the palette with the pink one gone. We now have the colors of white, light blue, blue, green, red, orange, purple, and yellow. Three of these we already know, so we are left with the colors of white, light blue, blue, green, and orange. Let's get in the details of what Hawaiian islands that represent these colors. First off, we have green, which equals Molokai, orange equals Lane, blue equals Kahulawe, white equals Nihau, and for light blue, there is no representation for this color. So for the two main islands of green and orange, those are the ones with actual populations on them according to Hawaiian census records. So with these islands in mind, we could expect more trial captains, possible Orokoryo forms, or new possible Tapus as well, and of course, Kahunas. The White Island has a population too, but a very small one filled with researchers and farmers, but it falls into a forbidden island, and I have an idea of how that works. I'll get into that one shortly. 
The ones we have left now, other than the white one, are the light blue and blue ones. The light blue one doesn't have any significance on the Hawaiian color palette, so I'm just going to assume that this is the Ether Foundation, or Paradise, since it's not an actual official island. The blue one could be the island where you find Marsh Shadow, and it has no island population whatsoever. This makes sense because of its son, Pokedex Entry. The island has zero population and is not inhabited at all. The perfect place for Marsh Shadow to be. It's also another forbidden island, but not because of mythical reasoning, it's kinda because the US used a nuclear bomb on it. Finally, the White Island of Nihau is also one of the Forbidden Islands, so that island in Ultra Sun and Moon could be an island for Necrozma. Notice how the island is white. White light is refracted into prisms, and it is then released into making a color spectrum. The White Island could represent the white light that is used to fuse either one of the legendary Pokemon together with Necrozma. Either that or Solgaleo create the white light and the fusion takes place on this island. White represents the white light refracted into prisms. I feel that this is the best possible connection with the island being white. So now we have representations of how these islands could be incorporated into the games of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. Of course, this is just a speculation theory of how it could work, so I may in fact be wrong. What do you guys think though? Share amongst yourselves in the comment section if you think it's possible we could get more islands. The color spectrum adds up and the islands of Hawaii are represented with a color from the triangular crest on Sogaleo and Lunala's heads. Those are my thoughts though, and I hope you guys did enjoy this video. So with that being said, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more awesome Pokemon content. Until then guys, I am Mystic Umbreon, and I will see you guys next time.